I want to bring in Mark Thiessen, fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, columnist for the Washington Post and a, and a Fox News contributor. And Mark, good morning to you. We, we brought you in to talk about good this morning, and a few Bill. other things, but I, I think we need to reflect sure. on what's happening in the U.S. Senate. Um, the debate we had here between a Republican and Democrat 45 minutes ago, they both agreed that the quorum has broken down in the U.S. Senate between Republicans and Democrats. This is happening, Mark, on the eve of what will be an all-out war, an ideological and political war on Neil Gorsuch. Now, how do you evaluate the state of affairs as it stands right now today, then? Well, what we're witnessing on Capitol Hill, uh, Bill, is, is the Democrats are experiencing a miasma of Trump derangement syndrome. They, they are not behaving rationally. This is, you're say, you say it's a war and they may try to fight a war, but it's a war they cannot win. And the reason they cannot win is because they changed the rules in 2013 to, uh, to eliminate the filibuster for uh, both cabinet appointees and also lifetime appointments to the federal bench at the circuit and district court level. What that means is they can't stop any of Trump's nominees for the for the uh, for the uh, uh, cabinet positions, and quite frankly, if they try to block uh, the, the his Supreme Court nomination, then Republicans will simply follow the precedent they set for lifetime judicial appointments and apply it to the Supreme Court. So they are not behaving rationally. They are they are trying to fight something that they can't uh, fight a war that they cannot win. And, there, there, and quite frankly, it's the, there was a vote, I mean, Mark, and I, I don't mean to interrupt you here. You know, we have a little bit of yeah, no, no, no. Nice, a little bit of drag here, but just. Just listen to yeah. Senator Feinstein from yesterday when she was talking about Jeff Sessions. Remember, I mean, he's he, he's the guy who came forward from the U.S. Senate and said, I'm getting behind candidate Donald Trump. Here's Senator Feinstein from California. He has reinforced and supported the Trump mission, style, rhetoric and views. He was the first senator to endorse. He has attended at least 45 Trump campaign events. He wore the hat. He was a leading voice. And during the campaign, he spoke at large rallies, smiling, while cr crowds chanted, lock her up. So now why is that relevant <laughs> when the American people have already voted? And by the way, we we're seeing Neil Gorsuch. We do believe in one of the monitors as he makes his way through Capitol Hill. We expected him at 1030 sure. uh, with the vice president, Mike Pence. So if there if there's any sort of comment he offers, Mark, I may interrupt you. But sure, while we await on that, go ahead and address Senator Feinstein there. Well, what does Senator Feinstein expect for Trump to no nominate someone who didn't support him during the campaign? Of course, Senator Sessions supported him. He's a member of the judiciary. He's eminently qualified for the job. And what I mean, what they just have not They're again, behaving irrationally. I mean, think about this, Bill. We are two weeks into the Trump administration. And because of Senate Democratic opposition, the Senate has confirmed exactly four Trump cabinet nominees. That is the lowest number in, f in over 40 years of Senate history. They, if you think about this, when Bill Clinton at this time, 17 cabinet nominations confirmed. Jimmy Carter, 12 no, uh, confirmed. Ronald Reagan, 15 confirmed. Barack Obama, 11 confirmed. They have confirmed four Trump nominees. This, this is not rational behavior. They can't stop them. What, is, what's, what, what it's come down to, honestly, Bill, is that they can't accept the fact that Donald Trump is president of the United States. And so if they confirm his nominees, they're validating his presidency and they can't bring themselves to do it. That's well, they need to listen to Barack Obama's advice. Elections have consequences. Trump won. How do you think the Neil Gorsuch thing unfolds? Um, how much resistance is there? I mean, is there eventually a concession? You, you look at some of these Democratic senators up for re-election in 2018. A lot of them are in states that went heavily for Donald Trump. Uh, yeah. West Virginia, Joe Manchin said he should get a hearing, he should get a vote. Um, I, I imagine we will hear more of that. Um, what breaks what breaks that log jam then, Mark, do you believe? Well, you know, the, the Trump has put out there that he wa that he wants to use the nuclear option if necessary. Right now, you need eight Senate Democrats to get to 60 votes in order to cl to clear him without breaking the filibuster. And there are seven Democrats who've said they will allow for uh, a vote on on uh, on Gorsuch. So you just need one more Democrat to come forward and uh, and Gorsuch is going to be confirmed. So this fight is over regardless of what they do. 
because either one more Democrat's going to come forward and he's going to, and we're and they're going to not have to use the nuclear option, or if they resist, Republicans will invoke their precedent and do the nuclear option. So they can put on a big show for their base, and I think they have to put on a show for their base because their base calls this a stolen seat. It's not a stolen seat; it's Scalia's seat, but uh, but they call it a stolen seat. So they're going to have to feed their base uh, by taking him through the coals. But the result is predestined. He's going to be on the Supreme Court. There's nothing Democrats can do to stop Trump's cabinet. There's nothing Democrats can do to stop his 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 Supreme Court nominees. And they're going to have to get over the fact that they lost this election and that he is president of the United States and is going to be making these appointments. I mentioned West Virginia, Missouri. Trump won by 19 points. Yeah. Claire McCaskill has got an election in that state. Uh, Montana, um, John Tester, uh, overwhelmingly for Trump. North Dakota. Indiana, I think, was nine points, I do recall. Uh, Wisconsin by a hair. Yep. Pennsylvania's a hair. And you wonder how much that matters. And I, I, I have to think in the end, it, it could matter a great deal, Mark. Oh, it certainly does. And this is not and it's not just the cabinet nominees. So you've got 10 Senate Democrats. So the, Demo the Democrats are defending 25 seats in the next in the 2018 election. So this field is completely tilted against them. And 10 of those are in states that Donald Trump won. Some of them, as you point out, are uh, are states that he won overwhelmingly. Now, the question becomes, if, the, if Schumer and the Democrats want to have this policy of opposition and obstruction, are they going to force these people to vote and obstruct Donald Trump's agenda on Capitol Hill? Are they going to obstruct tax reform? Are they going to obstruct infrastructure spending? Are they going to obstruct uh, his Supreme Court nomination? Because if they do, if they are, if Republicans can paint those guys as obstructionists to Donald Trump in states where Trump won by, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 points, uh, they are going to not only uh, lose, not make gains in the Senate next year. You may find a Senate where, where Republicans have a 60 vote, uh, you know, filibuster proof majority. Uh, so they have to be very careful about what they do. They need to start acting rationally Here because they are going to be in a much worse situation in two years if they don't. Stephen Crowley, New York Times. Neil Gorsuch, the nominee for a stolen seat. Uh, that's the headline from this article. Um, Neil Gorsuch, President Trump's nominee to the Supreme Court. It's been almost a year, he writes, since Senate Republicans took an empty Supreme Court seat hostage. And that's the position by which Democrats begin uh, this process. Mark, thank you for your time. Mark Thiessen watching all of that. Sure thing. Thanks for adapting One, two, on the fly, too. We'll see what happens from the, uh, the Sessions Committee hearing that's beginning right now. Thank you, Mark. Back to Shannon on the steps of the Supreme Court. Just a few steps.